All right, today is June 30, 2022. This is the meeting of the Kubernetes Storage Special Interest Group. Uh, as a reminder, this meeting is public, recorded, and posted on YouTube. Uh, if there's anything that you want to talk about today, feel free to add items to the agenda. You can find the link to the agenda doc in the calendar invite. Uh, I see a few folks have already put in items, so that's perfect. First, we're going to go over the 1.25 planning spreadsheet to get the status of the features that folks are working on for the 125 release. And then we'll go into any of the uh, design discussions that folks have posted here. Um, the upcoming deadlines to be aware of, uh, code freeze is going to be uh, on August 2. Um, we just passed the enhancement freeze. Uh, enhancement freeze is where the features that we commit to for 125 for the release are officially committed. And uh, now we are working on those features and they should be completed, a uh, code complete at least by uh, uh, August 2. And uh, with that, let's go ahead and jump into our planning spreadsheet and we can get status updates on different features. So First item here is delegate FS group to CSI driver instead of kubelet, including uh, updating end-to-end -end tests. Um, Fabio or Hamant, any status update on this? Uh, so I have uh, this feature as such is going to miss uh, 125, but I have a CSI spec change uh, PR open that moves this feature to GA. And rather than keeping it alpha because we don't want to move this feature to G in Kubernetes while CSI feature is alpha. So yeah, and once that merges, the rest of the work in this one is pretty simple. So we'll target it next release. Got it. Thank you, Hamant. Next we have, so I'm gonna mark this as uh, started here. And uh, do we want to change this so delegate FS group to CSI driver instead of kubelet, including ETB, and just put like CSI updates? And then next time we can do the Kubernetes updates. Yeah. Cool. Uh, next, we have recovering from resize failures. So, uh, like, because the, the, Alpha B, alpha to beta uh, graduation criteria were changed this release, and we were asked to add E to E while the feature was in alpha. And if it's being proposed for beta, then it must already have E to E test. So we didn't have E to E test for this feature. So it's going to miss 125 as well. And but. We'll be working on adding some end to test for in this release so that we can target it beta in next release. So that's the plan for this release. Right. So let's change this to E2E test for. And then we'll mark it as started. And it'll remain in alpha. Okay, cool. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Amant. Next, uh, we have issues related to assuming volumes or mount points. Is Jing on the line? Okay, we'll mark that as no update. Uh, next item is determine mount points without relying on proc mount. Jan, are you on the call? Okay, mark that as no update as well. Uh, next item here is complete, so we'll go ahead and skip that. Uh, then we have CSI ephemeral volumes existing API. The last status was kept as being reviewed, needs PRR. I will take a look. Uh, I believe this has been merged already. Uh, if this is the PR that I am thinking of. I'll double check offline. Uh, then we have local ephemeral storage resource management. 
Um, last status here was kept submitted and waiting for review. Uh, Shing, anything new here? Uh, this is James. Yeah, so I think uh, it, I think it's just on track. Cap is merged. Cool. Thanks, Shane. And also, I, I don't know. Uh, sorry, I was getting distracted in the beginning. I don't know if you mentioned the uh, the blog opt in. So uh, I'll go for uh, it. I added one and say the feature blog opt in. Uh, so yeah, if uh, anyone wants to write a blog for the feature that you're targeting this release, uh, we can add it here. So I've added a few to get started. Perfect, thank you, Shing. Yeah, it's a good opportunity to get visibility for the features that you're working on. So if you're interested in writing a blog post, uh, please make sure your feature is added here and uh, the release team will then work with you to get that uh, blog post written. Cool, thank you, Shing. Next, we have Volume Group API. Uh, previous status was KEP was updated. Uh, we'll take a look at Patrick's proposal on dynamic resource provisioning. Anything new here? Yeah, uh, I actually uh, look at uh, Patrick's KEP and then also uh, discussed with him a little bit. I added one item in today's agenda to talk a little more. I have a question just to see if we can follow what he's doing in his cap. Sounds good. So we'll go ahead and review that afterwards. Uh, next two items have been marked as complete, so we'll go ahead and skip those. Uh, then we have provision volumes from cross namespace snapshot PVC. Uh, this was waiting for reviews. Anything new here? Uh, Cap is not merged. So yeah, I think we need to do it on next release. Got it. So I see Tim added a comment, right, saying he kind of okay. He does not hate that proposal. <laughs> Anything else? I didn't have to check after that. So I'll go ahead and mark this as not part of this release, and then we can pick it up at the next release. Format uh, cross out. Okay, next item is CSI volume. Oh, before going to that, see Jonathan has an update uh, in the chat. He said the CSI in morning cap merged. He has some mic issues. Uh, is the CSI inline volume cap? Right. That's this one. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Cool. Thank you for that update. And with that, we can jump to um, CSI volume health, additional metrics. Right, so this one also because I don't have E3 test yet, couldn't uh, make it. Oh, uh, it. Yeah, so got delayed to next release. I thought I wanted to try, but I think it's still one week is not enough. For the so test. let's change this to add E2E tests. Right. Okay. And it remains in alpha. And let me change this as well to be consistent. Okay, cool. Um, all right, so then next item is volume populator data source, add metrics, and support and testing, um, mostly out of tree work here. Yeah, th th this, is, this is not moving forward, it's in beta. Um, the big question is the 
cross namespace snapshot stuff if that's happening, that would be an example of a populator. <clears throat> uh, what's the core work here, uh, Ben? Is it the, the, mostly testing and metrics? No, no, that the, there is no no work. Uh, okay. it, it, it's beta. We're not going to GA. <laughs> um, we should probably write a note to that effect. <laughs> Um, at least to 125. Got it. Okay. So then we'll go ahead and stop tracking this for this release then. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thanks, Ben. Next item is Cozy. How's that doing? Kept merged. The cap is merged. Yeah. Uh, do we have a seat here? I thought he's going to show up today and uh, trying to get more people to join the meeting. So actually, Right after this meeting, there was a cozy meeting. So he's right now just doing some planning, trying to get more people to work on the implementation. Nice. Uh, last week, we got a few new people from Microsoft or you side. They're going to help with some of the tasks. So I just want to get uh, the implementation updated based on the, the new cap and trying to get those uh, merged before the 1.25 code freeze. Because we do want to write a blog for this. Yeah, that'd be great. So good call out for folks on this call. If you are interested in participating and helping out somewhere, uh, Cozy is a exciting new project. Uh, they're trying to effectively be the CSI for object storage, um, which is a tall order, but uh, pretty exciting. And their meeting is immediately after this call. so. If you rejoin the same Zoom call after at uh, 10 a.m. Pacific time, you will uh, be able to join the COSY meeting and you can uh, uh, participate in helping there. All right, with that, we'll go ahead and move to change block tracking. Um, uh, so, yeah. It looks like there's the, been more. Did mm -hmm. not, the, so the cap didn't make it. Uh, yeah, so it's going to be next release. We did have uh, some meetings discussing, but yesterday we had we had a discussion at the data professional group talking about the uh, how this would work with aggregated API server. But I think we still have not sorted out. We still need to uh, talk more to understand more details and and then compare that one with the existing proposal. Got it. Um, I'll go ahead and drop this for tracking for this cycle, and then we can pick it up next cycle. Uh, yeah, sure. Okay. Uh, then we have runtime assisted mounting. Yeah, this one, uh, it uh, the the cap didn't make it uh, this release, and uh, mainly the status is uh, we are working on the feedback, which was to come up with a proxy model for micro VM runtimes and uh, basically incorporate that design into the cap. So right now we are working on the Kata side to make sure that actually works out and uh, we'll like um, integrate the findings from that exercise into the cap and kind of review it as part of 125. Got it, okay. All right, cool. Thank you, Deep, for the update. And we'll stop tracking it for 125 and then pick it back up for 126 then. Sure. All uh, next item is CSI proxy for Windows transition to privileged containers. Anything uh, new here? I think we were looking for volunteers to help drive this. Anyone uh, end up picking this up? It's designed for this cycle. Uh, I don't believe we had a volunteer. Okay. Um, well, if anyone on the call is interested, <clears throat> feel free to reach out. And otherwise, I'm going to go ahead and mark this as not tracked for this cycle. Uh, next, we have node expansion secret. Yeah, so this one is uh, pretty much done. Just uh, need the blog and documentation. Cool. 
it's great news. Uh, node expansion secrets. So I'll go ahead and leave it open for now, but uh, we'll wait for the remaining blog and documentation to be completed. All right, next item is SE Linux relabeling using mount options. Um, so I'm continuing uh, with the API review, and I hope I have like the final version. I'm waiting for the final approval. Cool, thank you, Jan. Uh, next, we have CSI move core to GA. Uh, kept for that was merged. Um, anything new here? So I'm thinking since this we're going through GA, we should write a blog, right? I know we had one. Yeah. That's cool. Cool. Shall we be interested in that? Let um, me reach out to Jawe and check. Uh, next is vSphere. Yeah, the cup is merged. Cool. Uh, then we have Azure File GA. Um, is this one? I believe this is the guy that we're waiting this one. So. Got it. So, okay, so we'll go ahead and remove this from this release. Uh, then GCE, GA, CAP was merged. Anything new here? Okay, and then we have AWS Windows support. Okay. And then we have Ceph RBD and Ceph FS. Any update on either of those? Uh, just a cup, cup merged. Okay. And then finally, we have Portworks, I believe. Yes. Oh, yeah, it's also merged. Uh, so I do have a question about the blog because I think last time uh, Humble was trying to write a blog for system migration Ceph RBD, okay. but I think there's some. And there are some comments when the uh, you know the doc team is reviewing this. They are saying, why you know why don't you just write one like general CS migration block instead of just for one uh, driver? I see. Because otherwise we'll have uh, like seven <laughs> individual blocks. <laughs> uh, so sense. does it make sense just have one instead of? Uh, yeah, I think what we could do is do a core um, mm -hmm. moving CSI migration to GA blog post and then. Underneath that, have a section for each one of these and where their status currently is. Okay. Yeah, totally makes sense. All right, cool. Next is cluster FS entry deprecation. Uh, right. So I think last time we talked about this, we decided that we want to go ahead and uh, deprecate. And I need to ch I need to check with uh, Humble because he said he's going to send out an email about this one. So well, he got it. So we did just, uh, I think we mentioned that on the Slack, but we should also send an email to the mailing list. Because he actually sent an email some time ago, like maybe a year ago about this. So he can just, uh, you know, go back to that same thread and uh, saying that now we have made a decision, we want to deprecate this. Got it. Okay. So we'll say, send an email about deprecation and okay that sounds good market is not started for now and this will be v3 this is bug fix okay 
Uh, next up is always honor reclaim policy. We're Stay. not, uh, yeah, because this is stays. Maybe this um, one can cross out for now. Okay. This is staying good. in of. Uh, Let's cross that out. Next item is control. Staying, yeah, no, still staying in up, yeah. But we are working on a U2E test. Uh, do you want to keep it open for the E2E tests or? Yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. So probably we should. Then we probably just keep both because uh, we will. Got it. Otherwise, uh, we have to wait for one more release. Because <laughs> now we need a E2E test merge it first. To add E2E tests in this release. And then let's just uh, suffix this with E2E tests. Okay, uh, and then we have secret protection, prevent deletion while in use. Uh, this is in design, anything new here? In design. Okay. And Sarah, same to the next one. Got it. All right, thank you, Misaki. Next is non-graceful node shutdown. Uh, yeah, so this is the same situation because we couldn't get the E2E test in. Got it. Okay. Uh, so, yes, stay in. Stay in alpha. Yeah, we can change that back right now. It's just, yeah. So that's staying in alpha, and this becomes E2E test. Okay. Uh, then we have address issues PVC created by stateful set will not be auto removed. Um, I don't think we've had a chance to get that status update, so. Oh, the cap is merged. Oh, nice. Actually, okay. it is uh, targeting, yeah. Uh, it is targeting beta, so. Do you know if Matt's still working on this? Yeah, Matt is, well, yeah, Matt, Matt pinned me to update the status, so I did change oh, it to beta, yeah. Okay. Does this not have that E2E test issue? Uh... Good question. That's funny, actually. <laughs> I, have, I wonder, because I think this ET test requirement is new. I don't know if everybody is clear on that, right? That's so I'm not sure if this one has ET test, but the cap is merged. <laughs> Maybe you should check with him. <laughs> okay, I'll mark that as I uh, should check if ET tests exist. We can verify next time. Because this is a this is the apps team. The SIG apps is uh, merging the cap, not, not us. So. Gotcha. Yeah, that's a, that's a good call out. <laughs> All right, next item is volume expansion for stateful set. Um, uh, so I think we have a new owner. Uh, oh, nice. Front. You remember the... Um, okay, he has yeah. not, the, the owner has not formally volunteered in this, in here, but there's a, he's proposing some changes. I'll ask him to... Yeah, but he has is. a new he has a new cap, right? And also, I think he did some POC. Yeah, right? yeah, he did, he did. So, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I don't know what his name is. Only this. I, I have this. Uh, okay, I, I found it. I'll, I'll put it in here. Yeah. So this yeah. guy, right, in the chat. So I put it in there, and uh, I have to review the cap. There is one. Outstanding thing there is like, like when me and Shalini, the previous owner we talked about, we Shalini took some notes, and I was hoping to get notes in a public document because we discussed the issues that will come up, and those were not captured in the enhancements. So it's like my bad, but either like if Shalini doesn't put it, then I'll try find time to to uh, to write that down so that yeah. People are aware that okay, these are the problems that are gonna come. I plan to do this that, that next week, most likely. This week I'm just yeah. Cool. Thank you, Haman. Um all right. Next item is better default storage class. Uh cap was merged here. Anything new? Um no, no update. Okay, that is kept merged. 
Uh, finally, we have handle per volume CSI driver capabilities. Um, anything new here, Ben? Which one is it? I'm sorry, I was <laughs> I was distracted. Uh, this one is handle per volume CSI driver capabilities. Oh, uh, <clears throat> yeah, we've uh, we've been unable to get Michelle in the meeting, so we need to we need to pick a time that'll work for her and everyone else. Got it. Um, but we have a we're starting to converge on on a, a tentative strategy, but um, it's one that she was opposed to, so we just got to get her buy-in or or decide to do something else. <clears throat> Cool, thank you for that update. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and mark this as started since the discussions are underway and this is designed. All right, so with that, uh, I think we're done with the 125 planning updates. Thank you everyone for the status updates. So next up, um, Carter has a PR, skip mount point checks when possible during mount cleanup. Uh, Carter, you wanna talk about this? Yeah, so this one has uh, been around for a while. <laughs> um, I think Jing is the kind of the main reviewer on it, and I don't think they're on the call. Um, so I, I think what I really just want is the SIG's input uh, on whether this is reasonable to get merged before the turbulence around the 125 release. Um, it's been kind of difficult for me to get eyes on it. Um, Nothing significant has changed on the PR in probably like six weeks. Um, it's just been kind of hard to get the final thumbs up from folks. Um, so, uh, yes, so uh, I am here. So, yes, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think I'm taking a look right now. It, it should be OK. So did, did I give the LGTM yet? No. So I noticed there is a pending review, uh, maybe if it is the one like I just submitted a pending review. Okay. I missed that. Yeah, I, I, I was just checking that. Mm. Okay, great. Well, uh, yeah, I'll respond uh, to your comments. I mean, it, it sounds like we still have several weeks to polish this up before uh, kind of the final code freeze. So uh, it sounds like we should be able to reach that. Uh, yes, yes. Um, I think uh, it's already have kind of thorough review. Um, it should be uh, merged, be able to merge to 125. Okay, sounds great. Thanks. Sure. All right, thank you both. Uh, with that, we'll move on to design reviews. Uh, first up, Shane, questions regarding uh, volume group cap. Uh, you wanna talk about this one? Yeah, so uh, with the volume group cap, I think went back and forth on that one. Initially, I only have this one volume group object. So I don't have this like volume group and volume group content, like the PVVC or snapshot one snapshot content model. Um, but then I thought, okay, normally we should have two if we want to support static provisioning. So I uh, updated the cap and uh, now in the existing cap, there are basically it's the kind of same pattern, volume group, volume group content. But then uh, Patrick has this uh, new cap that just got merged for 1.25. Well, he is proposing this uh, dynamic resource allocation. This is a, a owned by a sig node. Uh, so in, in here, there is a resource class and there is a resource claim, but there's no resource. So it's like there's a PVC, but there's no PV, kind of like that. Uh, so there's no binding because they just have basically just one object per resource. Uh, and then the, the resource handle is stored in the resource claim status. Uh, so I talked to him, he said um, the resource handle cannot be confidential. If, uh, you know, if uh, this, it is confidential, then the driver will need to do something about it to maybe somehow hide it. Um, only display the one that, that is allowed to be sh shown by, you know, uh, to others. Now, uh, so if we are using this, so I'm just wondering if we could use the same model to simplify the design, if we can have one object instead of two, that would be easier. But the question is, uh, are we fine 
with uh, you know showing a volume group handle, which is uh, which is supposed to be a handle on the sort system in the volume group status, which is a this volume group is supposed to be a user namespace object. I guess that's the question. So this I is. Think, a, mm -hmm. Oh, my main understanding of the the reason why I say we have like PV and not just only PPC is to be able to support the importing or like pre-existing mm -hmm. use case. Right? Yeah. So I think in maybe Patrick's case, I haven't read up on it, but I assume in his case, maybe he doesn't need to support that. Uh, um, that's also supported. So basically uh, it's up to the driver. So Kubernetes will not be the one who is worrying about that. Uh, so if uh, if you already have some resource that is already there. So yeah, so so it's not going to be a, like a, a declarative model anymore. So it's not like you put that in your spec. You don't put your resource handling in spec, but when you are doing dynamic provisioning, but if you already have some existing resources available, then the driver can just pick one that is already there. I think, I believe I should say that way. So it's, yeah, so it's not exactly the same as the way we are doing static provisioning today, but it's kind of a still, supported you you can have something that is you know already there it, i mean i guess the i think the difference is that like with volumes you actually have data on them right whereas with maybe other devices like gpus and stuff i don't oh you're saying maybe they don't care that. that case that much is that yeah yeah because when, when we import a volume it's because there's specific data on that volume that we want. Okay. Whereas like if, if it's something like a GPU or, or something like that, you know, there's no state on that. Maybe device. it's less important for people to really import it. Um, yeah. Although it's like just import a specific one. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Um, so, but for the, for the volume group case though, since we still, it's still like wrapping around those, uh, volumes right so you are so the static provisioning of a volume will still be supported it's not like if we just have one volume group object we cannot support p static provision of pv anymore because that's that one is uh, still there it's just like you cannot have something like you uh, let's say you know a volume group handle that is on your three system you cannot just say hey i want that volume group handle input that one i cannot do that anymore right so that's the thing so to be is that important i guess that's the question uh, so yeah, it's a, it's a, so if we don't, uh, you're right. So basically is it important to support the case? Well, I want to say, I want to import the specific one group handle. Is that something that is important or also like volume group snapshot handle, same thing, right? Similarly, is that important? Or can we just uh, have the dynamic way? Would that be sufficient? I guess that's the question. I can imagine a um, use case where, you know, somebody has an existing volume group. Uh, you know, maybe they're, it was created, they're recreating their cluster or something like that. Mm -hmm. and they just want to be able to import that existing volume group, uh, mm -hmm. volume group handle. But I guess your argument here is that you can still do an import uh, by just updating the status. Uh, so the input was, well, so it's going to be, you wouldn't be able to specify that particular volume handle, right? So if we only have one object, you, you just have to say, hey, uh, the user can just only request a voting group. It's up to the driver can pick one from a existing you know, if there is an existing volume group handle, then the driver can pick that pick one that is already created. Does not have to be, you know, create a new one. Um, but then uh, how does the driver know it's, that's the one? So that's the it's thing, been yeah. a while since I've seen, uh, it's been a while since I've seen the volume group um, proposal, but is it that when you create a volume group, you specify like a, a bunch of PVCs that you want to be part of that group? Uh, so the currently, so what we are supporting is we are, we are not going to be 
uh, well, so what we are going to do is you, you will be creating a new empty one group. And then you can say, I create one PVC, then you give the one group name. You basically kind of create a new PVC and add into the group one at a time. Um, so that's that's the that that's one one flow, and that another one is to you should be able to add an existing PVC to your group. Um, so that one seems to be kind of more important. Well, you have you know PVCs already created. You want to add them to an to a group. Um, and can can a PVC be part of multiple groups? So that was something that we we're proposing we could support. We did say, hey, you could have that one in multiple. So it's like the group name would be like an array. That's something that we are trying to uh, propose. That's uh, at least that's the current situation. Okay. Uh, I mean, so I guess I'm, uh, so I'm just trying to brainstorm um, maybe a couple approaches if say we didn't want to support this um, or other ways that we could support like an import case. Like one way is that we don't support import and we just always create a new group and add PVCs to it. Um, mm -hmm. uh, another possibility is maybe if, if you can bulk add PVCs to a group, then you know, maybe the driver could understand that, hey, I already have a group with all of these PVCs and I would return the same group handle. But uh, uh, I think, you know, um, there might be some implications of that maybe. Uh, right, so. I, I think we did have that. We actually, uh, because there was uh, some people had some uh, comments on, hey, you know, if you uh, support this one, adding one at a time is so inefficient. We did actually say that uh, like the, uh, like as at least in the CSI spec, we would be able to allow multiple volumes to be added or removed. You basically look, you know, there is a list of that. So we, we did say that. And then in the uh, like uh, the controller, like the volume group controller will be the one who is kind of uh, looking at the list of them. Uh, I believe, uh, I believe Sad was saying it's going to be like the um, attached detach controller kind of a, uh, yeah, I think the controller can make an intelligent decision about which right. call to make. Right, so it's going to be like a yeah, bulk uh, add or remove, something like that, yeah. So it's not like, so yeah, yeah we do handle multiples. So, so I thought that the, here the main point we want to confirm is whether uh, if we want to go with um, only one object design, right? Uh, not the binding like to object design. Is it safe to put uh, the information in the status? Is that the main thing? It sounds like, uh, Michelle, believe that that is not the concern, is, isn't it, Michelle? It sounds like that's fine. So it's like you have your voting group handle in, in the status field. The status is a user uh, object, user namespace object. So that's that's okay, right? That's not a, not a concern, right? I I mean, yeah, I, I think if, I mean, we, we do have to consider the security things, like if um, there's any potential security issue of exposing that handle to users. But I, I think my main question was more about whether or not we want to support the import use case or not. Mm -hmm. Right. Because I think that's going to be the major driver of if um, we need the second object or not. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, it sounds to me like there is an import use case here, right, Shinx? And it doesn't work if you have a single object, right? So if, if I want to take an existing volume group that has a set of PVCs already defined. Yeah. And I want to import that into my cluster. Uh, if I have a single object, 
then it's up to the driver to try and figure out which volume group I was talking about. Correct. Yeah, uh, we don't. Yeah, if we don't have two objects, then there is no uh, deterministic way, right? It's yeah. Like, and and so I guess my question is 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 that is the specific volume group actually important, or can we just always create a new group and add the same PPCs to it? I I think it's a, definitely would be that definitely is a valid use case for people to, who want to import it. Just a, can can we do it without? I mean, can we just somehow? <laughs> uh, will it be okay if we just kind of uh, um, using this uh, dynamic provisioning way, but uh, have a driver to figure out which one to pick? Would that be good enough? I guess that's the question, right? Um, so the name, well, so that because because normally we do have uh, the name that we uh, give at provisioning time is not necessarily a name that is returned by driver. So maybe uh, there is a way for driver to kind of uh, translate that, and then I don't know. <laughs> I'm just thinking. Yeah, if there's some way that we can get away with, uh, you know, the driver automatically selecting the right thing, then I think the use case is fulfilled and it should be fine. But I suspect this will be something that requires kind of user intervention. User knows exactly yeah, what it's, one it's you not, want. Yeah, if you really want to have the specific one, then I don't think we have a uh, very good way with just one object. Uh, you can say, hey, you maybe you pick a name that kind of suggesting, but that's probably not. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, no. How then how it work with two objects? Uh, two objects, you basically in the let's say if if volume, let's say volume group content is your admin space object in in there, you can provide the name, right? That's just like today how we do static provisioning. You give the handle name like volume handle or snapshot handle name, you put that in in there. Uh oh, the import here is means the static kind of like- static. Right, right, static, yeah, yeah. Just to, like how we, how do we do that? It sounds like it's still a valid case probably because the uh, volume, volume group is probably still different from the, yeah, the compute resources because those does not have data, yeah, maybe. Yeah, that's a good point. Hmm. Um. <sighs> Well, yeah, maybe it's, there's not enough time for of us to think the, the, the through. So maybe uh, we can think offline and then uh, see whether it's resolvable and think up. Yeah, we can, yeah, we can think more. Mm -hmm. We can actually this one. I don't have to decide in this meeting. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. So thank you for the discussion. Um, Let's move on to the next item. Uh, Abhishek, as if I, I wanted to discuss KEP uh, 661 and see if anyone is still driving it. If not, I'd like to help with it. Um, uh, Abhishek, are you on the line? Yes, I am. Uh, what is 661? Uh, I think you folks briefly discussed it. It was the volume resizing with the uh, stateful sets. Got it. Oh, are you the or are you are you the one who we? No, I am not. No, that oh, was someone not. else. Um, yeah. What in forty four? Is that that one or is that which? Sorry. Stay for seven right? Yeah. 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 Okay. Oh, so okay. there was someone. Yeah. There was a, someone who put a, the handle there. There was a. So if you look at the cap, there is a new cap. Um, maybe you can help review that cap. If you look at the, there is a link for the cap in this brush sheet. That's a, that's the latest the cap. Yeah, three, four, one, two. Three, four, one, two. Okay, yeah. I can, can take definitely a look take a look. Yeah. Yeah, but I think a uh, Hamand also is going to review that one. I believe there are probably still issues that are not addressed yet from previous uh, reviews. But if you can Got help, it. yeah. Yeah, if you no, can. No, I'd love to be in like the review. discussions, and I, I'm happy to help with implementation as well uh like we're active users of stateful sets and i would really oh, okay. love to see this like 
be a feature that we can use. So. <clears throat> yeah, uh, I think uh, we might have to set up uh, some calls to discuss the design. It will be good to hold those meetings in a Zoom call, like in this six storage Zoom and uh, get this recorded. And uh, uh, I'll talk to this other person and see if they're interested in driving it because it's, it's not one of those small features that you just go and do it. It's tricky and it requires like uh, some. So I'll see if we can do some follow-up call and do design and and drive this this feature to completion. So thank you for volunteering. I'll let's sync up on Slack and uh, yeah. Sounds good. Yeah. I... But yeah, let's, I guess, chat more offline. Yeah, I, I'll ping you my Slack handle and, and then you, you can find it each, find each other. Okay, cool. Yeah, I need to add myself to this, uh, I think, the Slack as well, but I will keep a note of it at least. Awesome. Thank you, Abhishek, for volunteering. And uh, thank you, Hamad, for the follow-up there. Uh, next up, uh, we have uh, Gary. Gary, are you on the line? Yes, of course, the call I was waiting for all day came in this second, but I told my call me right back. Um, yeah, um, there's a, 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 a something called a special research operator that's gonna be renamed into something called auto tree modules for installing kernel modules um, uh, in, into a OpenShift cluster, but it's gonna be merged into the Signode, I believe in general oh, uh, Kubernetes. Um, Brett uh, Thurber and Quentin Barato said if you guys would be interested, they'd be willing to give a five minute overview of it. I don't know if, uh, or a store installs a kernel module. Um, yeah, I think uh, installing kernel modules is an important thing for a lot of CSI drivers. So yeah, that would be very useful. Great. Um, so um, sh should I just suggest they join the next meeting or? Uh, up to you. Like We've got uh, about nine minutes left in this meeting, so you can use this one, or we can just put you on the agenda for the next one. Well, they're not online. They, oh, I, gotcha. Okay, I'm, I'm yeah. proxying for them. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. Uh, I think the, they'll do a better job. I could talk about it, but they'll do a much better job. Uh, yes, next can, meeting. Would can work. you give it a TLDR <laughs> now that you've now that you've got our antennas up? <laughs> oh, it, it basically it's 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 a it's a um it's an operator. Uh, that leverages something called node feature, feature discovery. Uh, node feature discovery um, la uh, labels all the nodes with the kernel version. And um, so that's a separate operator. And so what SRO does and other uh, modules does is it's a way to look at that and then look at all the nodes and it, it dynamically creates some daemon sets that have permission to install kernel modules and sends it the right information for the kernel module. So you install the right kernel module. How's that for a but, but, but two what, second what intro? Prob what, what problem is it trying to solve that it's hard to solve today? I guess that's what I'm wondering about. Like, kernel like we, have, we have ways of sort of solving, we have ways of installing kernel modules. So what, what, what can't you do today that this fixes? <laughs> well, it's, uh, well, how, how, well, how do you, how, when you say we have ways of, sort of like kernel modules that's done out of band of Kubernetes or is there a Kubernetes way that I'm not aware of? I mean, like daemon sets will install their own kernel modules with by having elevated permissions typically. So is it is it like a way to get around the, the need for high permissions? Correct. And, Correct. and get- It, it, it oh, wraps okay. the permissions. Yeah, it wraps the permissions. Obviously, eventually somebody needs permissions, but it wraps the permissions so that you don't have to give your- um, um, Okay, so so it's it's a security enhancement around kernel modules, so you can control who. It, it who also gets to it also it also will will automatically update um, uh, if if it notices that you know the kernel module has been updated. Cool. All right. Well, I I'd be interested in a deeper dive on that at the next meeting in two weeks. 
Okay, I'll I'll send I'll send a note to to the SRO folks and tell them you guys are interested. Yeah, we we needed to do it for a major financial, so uh, so it makes them happy. So it makes my life easier. <laughs> Yeah, that's awesome. Thanks, Gary. Um, and cool. feel free to add something to the agenda for the next time if you get confirmation from them. Yep. Yeah, I, they might have dropped in today, but I see they didn't. So, all right, I'll let them know. Sounds good. Thank you. Uh, all right, uh, we got about six minutes left. Anyone else have any topic they want to bring up? All right, if not, you get six minutes back in your day. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Bye.